traps but this time in detail imagine this you have two hyperlinks that only allows for one way in and one way out let's call the site exposed to the threat as in the entry point and the site that's deeper in your empire as the exit point why is this relevant because if you have a tier 1 fortress at the entry point and a tier 2 fortress at the exit point you could leave the site undefended and when their ships have entered the exit point immediately upgrade the tier 1 fortress and there we go the enemy ships are stuck with no way out but this explanation leaves out a lot this video will be a breakdown of how and why things are done first before you misunderstand the mechanics on how to actually trap people i need to first explain how ftl inhibition works you can research a tech in physics that allows your fortresses and star bases to block hostile hyperdrives but how does it actually work well when you enter a system with a hostile inhibitor, you can still exit with the hyperlane you entered the system with. But you cannot use the other hyperlanes in said system unless the inhibitor is taken down. If you use jump drives and jump into a system, you will not be able to use any of the system's hyperlanes because technically, you didn't enter the system from any hyperlane in the first place. So the only way out is by waiting for your jump drives to reach charge and jump out with that out of the way i'll then explain how queuing works how do you properly use the build queue to instantly activate and deactivate inhibitors you first upgrade your tier 1 fortress and when it's one month before completion build something and put the fortress on the bottom of the queue now this already enables your trap to work as long as the fortress behind the system already has an inhibitor online but if the enemy for some reason checks the planet to see if it's really safe, they will see the trap in the form of a nearly built fortress one month away from being completed. How do we alleviate this problem? You build a lot more buildings or districts to hide the almost built fortress to the bottom of the queue. So someone not specifically checking for traps on the build queue wouldn't be able to tell that something was off and thus has a higher chance to fall into your trap. Well then, it's time to explain the differences between factions and their respective ground forces, how their specific tradition trees affect their ability to make traps, and how it relates to how to use their abilities effectively. First off, normal empires and hives have the same ability to access the shield generator, never surrender, and survival of the fittest, thus can gain the cap negative 98% bombardment modifier, allowing their fortresses to be completely invulnerable from orbital damage. Preferably, they would fill this up with xenomorph armies, but unfortunately, you need to have pre-sapiens to gain access to them, so it's very unlikely to happen. Their best bet is to use gene warriors or clone soldiers to hold down their fortresses. Conversely, machines have the unique special army type called the Mega Warform, arguably the best army type in the game. Due to it having insane health, insane damage, infinite morale, and just utter complete domination in combat with, making machine fortresses nearly impossible to invade. But they don't have the same bombardment modifiers as Hive and normal empires. They only have the shield generator and never surrender, effectively making their max bombardment nullification to only negative 75%, which is decent, but it means that their fortresses can be slowly whittled down even if the mega war forums in said fortresses are unbeatable. Remember, FTL inhibitors shut down if devastation hits above 50%. In conclusion, you use machine fortresses to slow down the enemy and stall the war for as long as possible on multiple choke points, on top of inflicting massive war exhaustion on enemies while hives and normal empires use their fortresses to make a makeshift shift wall in their inner core of their empire and use guerrilla forces to cut off any new army reinforcements when they are already deep in your territory, covering for their main weakness. Now we need to talk about the recent change in mechanics relating to hyper relays and gateways. Why is this relevant? Now that gateways and hyper relays instantly change hands once the starbase is taken even when there is a planet or habitat that is invaded yet. It means that you need to keep in mind on the trap's mechanics
mechanics when building gateways and relays. For example, if you have a relay network on a trap, the enemy wouldn't be able to use the hyper lanes, but they can still use the hyper relays to escape from the system, rendering your trap completely useless. Now, how do we fix this flaw? By positioning your gateways and relays in this manner. Let me explain. Assuming that the enemy enters through the entry point and warp into the exit point, if both places have a hyper relay, they could just escape to another nearby hyper relay once trapped in the entry point. But disconnecting your relay network on specifically the entry point means that there is no other way out other than to use jump drives. Keep in mind that this only works for an invasion from one direction. If you want the trap to work both ways, inside and outside, you need to disconnect your relay network on the entry and exit points, preventing easy movement for the enemy. This also applies for gateways, but this time, you cannot build them on the entry and exit points, because when the starbase of the system gets taken, the gateways will change hands and provide an instant exit, which would make the trap pointless. If you want to use traps while camping, then click the video on screen for some extreme brain enlargement.